friends welcome back to my channel myself monica and i'm back with this new video on urethra okay so <clears throat> it's very important uh it's, it's very important to go with the mcs so today i'm again back with few very frequently asked and important mcqs on the topic urethra so while solving the mcqs i will try my best to explain few things so that it becomes easier for you to remember the question and the answer also so now let's get started so first question says that the prosthetic urethra is characterized by all of the following features except okay so the question says the prosthetic urethra is characterized by all of the following except and there are four options so this question was asked in AIPZ okay it was already asked in AIPZ so when we are talking about urethra so we need to understand the basic structure of urethra okay so when uh, we see a urethra so urethra is generally divided into the okay three parts okay urethra is uh, generally divided into three main parts the location it is divided into three parts from one is prosthetic part okay the second one is the membranous part and the third the third uh, cardi uh, third classification is spongy or penile part so it's it's urethra is divided into three parts so uh, i will show you a diagram of urethra also so you can see there with uh, with a uh, different uh, this uh, division of urethra on the basis of location from that the so here you can see it divided into prosthetic part membranous spon urethra and spongy urethra on the basis of location uh, like it is worked in the prostate so prosthetic membranous and then spongy urethra part also is there so some some books is that pre prosthetic part but and most of the standard books are three only so we will study three so in the prosthetic part from the posterior side because it passes uh, through the this um, prosthetic gland since the prosthetic part passes through the prostate gland it is one of the whitest and most palatable part of the male urethra okay and this much it travels through the anterior part of the prostate so in the posterior part of this prostate uh, urethra okay so this is if this is the and if this is the anterior and then the posterior part of this urethra which is a tube okay which is almost like a tube what we can see what are the structures present there that is the question so if you know that okay in urethra so if this is a tube okay in the prostatic part here you can see there is a slight elevation or there is a slight slight fusion okay so that slight fusion or the slight elevation so guys what happens here you, as you can see in this picture this is the urethra now in the prostate okay now in the prostate gland what happens is that urethra little bit bulges out okay urethra little bit <clears throat> bulges out and while it is bulging there is the mucosal fold okay so the, you can see in the middle of the urethra there is a median mucosal fold okay that folds and just elevates a little bit that gets folded and then elevates elevates a little bit and the mucosal fold in the middle little bit it also bulges out so did you understand so if this is a prostate and the posterior part when the urethra is passing through it in the posterior part of the of the urethra you can see that this urethra while passing it bulges out okay and in the middle it is bulging due to the mucosal fold okay there is a mucosal fold and this mucosal fold is also a little bit bulging in its center now what happens so what happens is that this no, this <clears throat> this mucosal fold is known as the urethral crest okay this mucosal fold is known as the urethral case crest this is the 
प्रोस्टेटिक प्रोस्टेट ग्लैंड नॉट प्रोस्टेटिक प्रोस्टेट दिस इज द प्रोस्टेट ग्लैंड एंड दिस इज द म्यूकोशल फोल्ड ओके आफ्टर दैट वट यू कैन सी इज दी कोलिकुलर सेमिनेलिस और वरुमेना आई एम सो रॉन्ग आई एम सो बैड विद दिस प्रोनाउंसिएशन सो दिस इज दोन एज वेरू मोनाटम और कोलिकुलर सेमिनेलिस सो दिस इज दी राउंडेड एलिवेशन इन द मिडल अफ दि क्रेस्ट द राउंडेड एलिवेशन इन द मिडल अफ दि क्रेस्ट इज नोन एज दिस राउंडेड एलिवेशन इज नोन एज के एफ आई होप यू कैन सी इट सी ओ एल एल आई कोलिकुलस सेमिनेलिस और कोलिकुलस सेमिनेलिस और वेरियोमोनाटम मोन 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 टैनम एंड इट बी एस द थ्री ऑरिफिशियस यू कैन सी थे द थ्री ऑरिफिशियस दैट इज वन इज प्रोस्टेटिक यूट्रिकल एंड द टू आर नोन एज इजैकुलेटरी ड्रॉक्ट सो थ्री ऑरिफिशियस वन इज नोन एज द प्रोस्टेटिक यूट्रिकल एंड द टू आर नोन एज द आई ड्रॉप दिस ड्रॉफ डायग्राम ejaculatory duct okay prostatic um utricle and ejaculatory duct so uh to this prostatic sinuses okay all this the prostatic sinuses uh and uh so in the urethra okay in the urethra you can see that there are the prostatic sinuses okay on the lateral side of the urethral crest and uh, this uh, pros here the prostatic gland opens by the uh, numerous ducts into this prostatic sinuses okay so with the help of different ducts in prostatic glands open here in the urethra through the sinuses so this is about the posterior side now so prostatic sinus Now, what the question says, the prostatic urethra is characterized by all of the following features except, and there are four options. It is the widest and most palatable part. Yes, it is. I already said it in the beginning of the video that prostatic urethra, the three parts, it is divided into three parts: prostatic part, membranous part, and spongy part. Among that, prostatic part is the most widest and palatable part. Okay. Next thing is that it lies closer to the anterior surface of the prostate, so it is definitely very close with the prostate. So this one is also right. Okay, anterior surface of the prostate. Next question says that receives prostatic ductus along its posterior wall. So obviously there are the prostatic ductus received uh, with this um, prostatic sinuses. So that is also right. Presents the concavity posteriorly. So it says that it is concave posteriorly. Okay, so here it is wrong because it possesses the concavity anteriorly, not posteriorly. Okay, it shows concave anteriorly, but it is not concave posteriorly. Okay, it is concave anteriorly, but not posteriorly. So that's why question number B is wrong. So whenever you see something bulging, you see that it is okay. It is like this. It has balls, but it looks like this. So concavity is from the anterior side, not the posterior side. So I hope you could understand here. There might be confusion with these two questions that is presents the concavity posteriorly and lies closer to the anterior surface of the prostate. So what happens is when this uh, urethra is passing out, so it passes more becoming close to the anterior surface than when the posterior one. of the prostate so it is known as it lies closer to the anterior surface of the prostate and then second thing is the concavity is anteriorly not posteriorly so and question number b is the wrong answer question number 2 so if you have properly watched question number 1 then you can definitely solve it just by guessing it why it is so so many things studied in question number 1 is repeated here the question says not true about the prostatic urethra is so it was asked to neat pattern 2016 and the options are trapezoid in shape in cross section presence of varumonatum 
opening of prostatic ducts and urethral crest on the posterior wall. So I guess here that if you have studied question number one, you know that there was urethral crest on the posterior wall. You also know that there, know that there is opening of the prostatic ducts and you also have studied the presence of verumonatum. It was the bulging present in the urethral crest. Now about A. So you can guess it and say of course A might not be right answer. And it is not the right answer because in quite cross section the prosthetic urethra looks like a crescentic shape. Okay, it looks like as a as a crescentic shape, not the trapezoid shape. We can also analyze because prosthetic urethra it was so prosthetic urethra looked like this in the prostatic part. So even if you have a cross section, you can see that by this structure, it, there is no any chances of it for looking like a trapezoid shape. It can look like a crescentic shape, like a you know this moon, like this one. If you don't know what is this, this, this kind of shape, you can see in the cross section of the prostatic urethra. So this was asked in the neat pattern. This was about question number two. Now moving to the question number three, which is that bulbo urethral glands open into which part of the urethra so in question number one i have talked about the prostatic urethra there we studied that urethra has been divided into three parts that is prostatic membranous and spongy okay so now we have already studied about the prostatic urethra in detail so i don't think i need to explain it now we will talk about the membranous urethra and the spongy urethra so this is the prostatic urethra so here you can see that the small part i have labeled it as the membranous urethra so this membranous urethra is surrounded by the sphincter urethra muscles uh, forming the external urethral sphincter so here is internal urethral sphincter and it forms the external urethral sphincter this membranous part okay this membranous part is least dilatable and is the shortest urethra okay in case of division this membranous part is the least di dilatable and it is the shortest one now this one is the spongy part of the urethra okay this one is the spongy part of the urethra so this is spongy part of the urethra see this is spongy part a urethra all urethra i have uh, marked it with the late um, blue cross styration so you can see the blue cross cross styration this tube this is the whole urethra from urinary bladder up to this penis this is the up to the floor of the glass penis okay so now this uh this urethra in the spongy part of the urethra so in this part we can see that this white space it is known as the okay corpus is oh, so i will change where is my marker okay so this is corpus spawn some okay so this lies inside the corpus spongiosum so the spongy part which is 15 centimeter in length it lies under the corpus spongiosum of the okay corpus spongiosum of the penis okay this is the penis and this is the glans penis and this is the corpus spongiosum and this part from the bulb of the penis to this uh, glans penis or now which is known as the uh, spongy part of the urethra so it has the two dilated fossa so it has got two dilated fossa one in here and in one in down so one is the navicular fossa in the glans penis and another one is the bulbo urethral fossa which is this in the bulb of the penis there is a bulbo urethral fossa so two fossa can be seen in the spongy part of the uh, urethra and this so in the bulb okay bulb of the penis it is uh, it has got the shape of trapezoid in shape whereas in the body it has got the shape of the transverse slit so here in this external sphincter okay muscle you can see here external urethral in sphincter muscle you muscle you can see here there are the two bulbs so this is a bulbo urethral gland so there are the two glands which are known as bulbo urethral gland that is cowper gland you will study about this in detail in the uh, male and female reproductive organ for here i'm just naming them bulbo urethral gland which is known as cowper gland so this bulbo urethral gland 
which is asked in question it is said that if it was asked that where is bulb ureter glands located then you could have answer it as the membranous membranous urethra in membranous urethra there is bulb uh, urethral gland but question says that bulb urethral glands opens into so the bulb urethral glands you can see here is a duct so this glands open through this duct here okay here in this part of the urethra which is in the spongy part of the urethra which is known as the spongy urethra so that's why the answer for this is the spongy do you understand so let me tell you one okay once again so prostatic part membranous part and spongy part prostatic urethra lies in the through the transprostate gland uh, membranous urethra lies in the membranous part where there is external urethral sphincter muscle so it has called bulbar urethral gland it is very short it is one of the shortest and the least dilatable part um, and uh, the uh, spongy part lies in the corpus spongiosum of the penis so there are two fossa that is glans penis and the bulb of penis there are two kinds of fossa it is 15 centimeter in the length and here okay here you can this is the spongy part and the longest part of the uh, urethra and uh, and here in the bulb of the penis, it has got a trapezoid like appearance, which was we, which we studied in the question number second. There was lap, trapezoid appearance in the prostatic part of the urethra, but no, it is in the bulbular part of the urethra. So in the bulbular part here. And then in cross section, this body looks like a transverse lid. So this was all about it. And the question says that bulbar urethral glands, this opens into the spongy part of the urethra. So this is all about the uh, sample uh, description for question number three. I hope that you are able to understand it. I have already discussed about the prostatic uh, part in question number two. And then the spongy part, there is nothing much to learn. Just go after this. Don't, don't go, don't stress yourself so much. Just you need to understand this. So now we will go to the question number four, which says which of the following do not drain the limb from the spongy part of the urethra. So the right answer for this, there is nothing more to explain about it. So the right answer is the sacral node. Sacral node does not drain, but internal iliac tip, inguinal and superficial inguinal lymph nodes, they drain the limb from the spongy part of the urethra. The next question, question number five says the length of the female urethra is and it is the length is four centimeter in female whereas it is eight to twenty centimeter in the male. Okay, so male it is more longer and is smaller in the female. That is why the female gets lots of urinary tract infections. Okay, so now there are few points I think we should not miss. So let me tell you there are many things to study from this topic. I have just maybe talked about 10 to 15 percent only so these were the questions that i could find from urethra that were asked in these competitive exams but there are many things that you need to uh, read and understand okay if you are an mbbs student so don't just rely on this video there are other things that you can study so i have just made noted here the four important points that is uterus and vagina in male is represented by the prostatic uricle so a uh, uterus. so i think so that's uh, the uh, one point which uh, which I found in the book. And next thing is prostatic urethra above the seminal colliculus is lined by transitional epithelium. I have discussed about seminal colliculus also. Okay, so go and you know if you have just a look at question number one, then you can understand what is seminal colliculus and below it by stratified columnar epithelium. So you should know this also because this might be asked in your exams, okay, especially to the MBBS students. Membranous urethra is lined by stratified columnar epithelium, okay, and the spongy urethra up to the navicular fossa is lined by stratified columnar epithelium, whereas below it is by the stratified squamous epithelium. Okay, so this was all about uh, the uh, important points of urethra that I could get. Uh, there is still more if possible then I will even make the part 2 where I will uh, maybe describe few important points related to it. Otherwise, this will just uh, be the, about the today's lecture on urethra. I hope you like my video. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Bye. Take care.